Hello! Halloween is almost here, and a pirate treasure chest is the perfect way to hand out candy to all those trick-or-treaters. I'm going to use these old walnut logs that I've had out back, but this is the perfect project to use some cedar fence picket or those cheap pine boards that you can pick up at Home Depot or Lowe's. To start, we are going to cut all of these into 18 inch long by 1 and 1 quarter inch wide strips. We are going to need 40 of those strips total when it's all said and done. You can see here I'm cutting everything up into an inch and a quarter wide strips. The wider you make them, the bigger the arch of the lid will be. I suggest to keep them around an inch and a half to an inch and a quarter. Now we can cut some of them down to their final length. We are going to cut 20 of these strips into 16 inches long. The rest we want to leave long so we have plenty to work with for the rest of the box. Then we're going to take 10 of those 20 pieces over to the table saw. We're going to set that blade at 9 degrees. I know I got that on there upside down and backwards here. We want to cut a 9 degree angle on both sides of 10 of the strips. These 10 strips will be the curved lid to the box. Once you get all of those cut up, we can get them taped together. I suggest to line it up against the table saw fence. That way you can keep them all straight and square. And once we get all the pieces taped together, we can get the glue in all of the grooves. Try to spread it around in there evenly with the brush to make sure that it's nice and evenly coated. It was a little too wide to get my hand all the way across, so I ended up having to put a couple layers of tape to get it tight. I then let that sit overnight before taking the tape off. It was a little bit of a struggle to scrape the squeezed out glue off the inside where it's concave, but it wasn't too bad. It took me about 10 minutes. Next, we are going to get the strips laid out for some small panel glue ups. First, we have the front and back panels. These were the other 10 strips that we cut to 16 inches long. We'll need five strips for each panel. We can get both sides of the box out of one panel of five strips. The box's bottom panel is made of six strips, and both sides of the lid can be made out of three of the strips. Once we figure out what orientation we want all the strips to be in, we can start gluing up some of the panels. While I'm waiting for all of those panels to dry, I'm going to give the lid a quick sanding. I just started with some 80 and 120 grit and some 150 grit by hand as well, just trying to knock off all the harsh edges. Once the panels are dry, we can get them all out of the clamps, and then we can mark out the lid side pieces. Start by putting a mark to identify which piece is for which side, then I just trace the inside on both ends of the lid. Once I get both pieces marked out, I can take it over to the bandsaw and cut these pieces out. You could also use a jigsaw to cut these out. These are not going to be like perfect curves. There's going to be 10 straight lines on each piece. By following the straight lines on the bandsaw, it will fit much better into the lid. Now we can get those two pieces glued into the lid itself. Once we have the lid done, now we know exactly how wide we need to make both of the side pieces of the box. We can come over to the table saw and cut both of those pieces to size. Then we can do a dry test run and see how everything is going to fit and line up. It's looking pretty good. Next we can get that clamped up and we can take the measurements for the bottom panel. We are going to add a half inch to each one of these measurements. Then we can take the bottom panel over to the table saw and cut it out. Once the bottom panel is cut to size, I'm going to get a half inch dado stack installed into the table saw. And then I'm going to cut a half inch wide, quarter inch deep dado into the inside of each one of the side panels to the box. The quarter inch deep dado is why we made that bottom panel a half inch long and wide in each direction. Next we can put the sacrificial fence onto the table saw and we can cut the rabbits in that bottom panel. 
going to test fit it to make sure it's going to work, and then I will cut the remaining three sides of the panel. Then we can get the box all glued and clamped up. While the box is drying, I'm going to cut the rest of the strips in half so that I can use them for edge banding on the box and the lid. I'm going to set the edge banding on the lid to hang down about a quarter of an inch past the edge. This is going to make it fit nice and secure on the box. Here I'm using some of the edge banding clamped on the front and back of the box about a quarter inch from the top. This will give me a reference point to put the edge banding onto the sides of the lid. Once I get both side pieces on the lid, I can get the front and back pieces installed using the same technique. When the lid banding is finished, I can install the lid onto the box and then I can install the box banding right up against the bottom of the lid's banding. Then I can give it a quick sanding to clean up all the edges and make sure everything is lined up correctly. Now we can put the remaining edge banding around the bottom of the box. Technically when you're building a box you would want to use a router and not cut that dado all the way through those panels. But I'm not building an heirloom piece here. I'm just trying to make this a super simple fun project and not get too technical. If you're still watching the video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that thumbs up button for me, if you feel I deserve it. It helps spread the video to other people who share our interests, and will also help me make more content in the future. Really appreciate it. Okay, I have a feeling some people might get a little upset with what I'm about to do to this walnut. I don't really care. I'm going for a distressed look here. When I imagine a pirate treasure chest... It's been through at least a couple sword fights. It's probably been buried in the ground for a while. It for sure looks pretty beat up. So first I'm going to take an angle grinder and I'm going to cut some slashes into it. And then I got a lag bolt here and I'm going to hammer the threads into the wood to make some interesting marks. And then next I'm going to take a hatchet here and I'm going to cut some notches into the edges. Make it look like it has had some big chunks taken out by a sword blow or maybe just getting knocked around on the boat while it's been out in sea. And then for the best part, I get to play with, I mean, use a blowtorch in a really responsible way to put some burn marks on it. Note that I do have my fire extinguisher right here handy, just in case. If you're ever going to build a piece with a distressed look like this and are going to use a blowtorch, I have found that it looks best if you concentrate on all of the corners and the edges with the blowtorch rather than going all over the piece if you can help yourself. Every time I make a distressed looking build, I always seem to go a little overboard with the blowtorch. I will definitely freely admit it is my favorite part. Now we can go back and we can start sanding it all down again. Mainly I want all of the black scorch marks to stay in all the slashes and the grooves. But I will leave some random marks on the piece for some aesthetics. Now we're going to get a nice oil finish put on. I'm using the Natura One Coat for this finish. Once the finish is all dry, I'm ready to get all of the hardware installed. I'm just using some really basic cheap black hinges on the back of the box. I found an old timey looking latch for the front. And then I found these little rivet upholstery decorations that I nailed into the edges. Lastly, I installed some cheap black handles. And now we have an awesome pirate treasure chest to help dole out heaps of candy to all the trick-or-treaters this Halloween.